One of the biggest battles for farmers in the southern U.S. is the one against hurricanes each fall. This week, as Hurricane Francine prepared to make landfall, farmers across the south, especially Mississippi and Arkansas, rushed to harvest their crops, making it a stressful and sleepless week. Arkansas has been the nation's leading rice producing state for over 50 years. And as we show you this weekend, no matter the challenge, farmers are finding a way to cultivate a future for rice. It's a crop that's a mainstay in the southern U.S. Rice is a crop that's cultivated a rich history for farmers like Tim Ralston. We farm just a little over 5,500 acres. Uh, we're in the Arkansas River Valley, which is kind of in the west central side of Arkansas. We primarily grow rice. The Ralston family has farmed here for three generations, even sowing seeds that sprouted into their own rice brand, Ralston Family Farms. We've been blessed to get it in about 8,000 grocery stores across the United States and uh, also sell it into uh, restaurant service. With six different varieties of rice, the Ralstons have fostered their own growth. We're on a journey to become 100% regenerative and uh, we're well underway with that. This fall, they have plans to plant cover crops on every single acre, harnessing a plan that's allowing them to thrive in their own way. By using the cover crops and using those cover crops as kind of a mulch in the spring when we plant, as we're planting directly into those cover crops, it helps us reduce our dependence on synthetic chemicals and fertilize. And at the end of the day, that's where we're wanting to head. From cereal to winter peas to radishes and clover, it's a five-way mix that's been a recipe that works for them. We get a lot of rain, and so when you get a lot of rain in uh, the fall right behind those cover crops being planted, you got to have something that's a survivor. Ralston admits they're still learning, but the family is mastering their trade in every aspect, from start to finish. We've got uh, a zero-waste facility. Everything that comes into the mill gets used for a purpose. When the rough rice is harvested, it comes in a husk. The husks are used to feed poultry, with some of it also turned into compost. And that compost goes back on their own farm. Any of the uh, bran that we choose to take off of the rice, it's used in our cattle operation here on the farm. Any of the brokens and the off-colored kernels that we take out of the, the mix prior to going to the package with it, that's utilized in the pet food industry. But it doesn't stop there. In 2016, the family decided to invest in their own rice mill. But what makes it so unique is they found a way to create no waste. Even the dust that comes off of the product, the, the rough rice as it's coming in, that too is captured and utilized back as cattle feed. So nothing that comes, nothing that comes in this facility doesn't have a good purpose, you know. From the zero waste with the rice to the solar panels that now span across eight acres, the regenerative journey is now even certified by Regenified. We're proud of the way it looks now, but I think you come back in 10 years, uh, you know, we'll have a lot to show for our efforts. Ralston is proud of what they've accomplished so far, from the decision to be 100% regenerative to vertically integrating with their own rice. And we just view this as a generational opportunity for the family because you know it's a lot of it's a lot of investment a lot of work but if it's something that will last throughout generations the ralstons are just one example of how the rice industry is seeing drastic change with more farmers looking into owning and operating their own mills so i think what's going to happen is that we're going to become more like brazil over time where, where, where there's going to be more competition from large farmers that that are very sophisticated and involved in the market that's all a good thing because that's then they then the farmer gets to see it like a miller sees it. Milo Hamilton has been in the rice industry for over five decades. He says the technology for farmer owned mills was perfected by Brazil, but is now taking over the rice industry in the U.S. What you're seeing as a result of that, if you go to the grocery or whatever, you're seeing more private packages that you wouldn't have recognized before. Typically, 40% of the rice grown in the U.S. is eaten and consumed here at home, while 60% is exported. Another one of the challenges that I think the farmers have for the U.S., but I think is a huge opportunity if we can get around it, is to do more identity-preserved varieties. And that'll help our export markets because a lot of the uh, Latin American markets want certain types of rice, certain varieties of rice. And John Anderson, who's also in the rice industry, says that could be a new area of growth for an industry that relies on export markets year to year. I personally have been involved with uh, exporting 
some large amounts of rice that is variety specific and that's fetches a premium and it's an opportunity it's a way for us to gain more market share prices for rice are good this year largely because of a shortage of rice in south america we're seeing a lack of rice because of the problems with the El Nino in the last two or three years in, in the Far East, and uh, we're working our way out of it. We're pretty much out of it now. On Thursday, USDA's updated WASDE report showed reduced supplies and lower ending stocks. And Hamilton says the rice industry is experiencing something extremely unusual. Brazil is about $5 a hundred weight higher than the U.S., and I watch the, that relationship very closely. Normally at this time of the year, the Brazil is lower than ours because we've run out of rice. Hamilton says that means there won't be much competition until December or even January of next year, which means growers could be seeing some of their highest prices this fall. Then the South American crop comes on and it's a whole different ball game. So between now and the end of the year, we should be pricing a lot of our rice and do it um, slowly. Don't do it quickly. As of Monday, USDA reported 54% of the U.S. rice crop had been harvested. That is 21 points ahead of average and 12 points quicker than last year's pace. And in the coming weeks, we'll try to uncover how much of those southern crops were damaged by the remnants of Hurricane Francine. Well, when we come back, there could be a change in a new top importer of U.S. corn. Back around the world is next.